Madrid's a big city, but at least it's not bumper to bumper traffic 24 hours a day like many of them are. Calms down at night. It's not bad considering it's 8.30 in the morning on Saturday. Weather's cooler too. Nice day. Time for a walk. I don't know what's going on today, but they got the roads blocked off. Fine with me. They have things going on all the time. Always something happening. Parades and marches and It's like a big running event. Just a little bit further. Oh. Yeah, I won. Oh man, that was tough. First place. 7,000 contestants. Getting hungry. Maybe I'll, uh, oh yeah, my Spanish is rusty, but I think that says grilled dough cheese o sandwich o on yeast o bread o with el bacon o lettuce o and tomato o. <sighs> Maybe I'll make that. Well, I'm back for my 10K. That was really tough. A lot of fast runners in that thing. Man, some of them almost caught me. So, uh, I'm going to make a uh, sandwich. I got the idea from that menu I saw when I was out walking around. I mean running around. And uh, I'm going to call it Grilled Cheese Yeast Bread BLT. Or the Spain Tex Wits. So, let's get at it. Found this really pretty little piece of bread. It's a, it's a yeast roll. Um, I want to get it. And I'm going to cut it in into thirds because it's a pretty big old hunk of bread. Uh oh, somebody's somebody's already tagging me. That's not a big hunk of bread. That's a little old piece of bread where I'm from in Texas. But I think it's a pretty good size roll. I like to do things in thirds for a couple of reasons. Gives you more surface space to put on more butter and cheese. And B, when you're doing stuff that is made with hot food and cold food, it's good to uh, be able to separate them. Just like any kind of cooking, you want to start with your food separate, and then if you want to meld the flavors later, you know, go ahead. But, uh, for instance, to make good spaghetti, don't just throw it all in a pot and cook it at the same time. You need to saute uh, your vegetables separate. Cook your meat separate. So forth and so on. And then, and then put it together at the end. Otherwise, that's what separates us from the animals. So, as you can see... I got some bacon already. I like medium cooked bacon, however you like it. This is shredded cheese. Don't tell anybody I bought it in the bag that way. This is a, a fresh homegrown tomato and some shredded lettuce. And um, a little butter on here. I like butter. I don't know if you can tell. By looking at me, but I like lots of butter. I 
and I do a triple decker grilled cheese too. You don't have to have all this other stuff. But, uh, three pieces of bread and two slices of American cheese or whatever you got. It's good. I'm a firm believer that you could cook a dog turd in butter and it would make it taste pretty good. But that's up to you if you want to try that. So, there we go. I have to make sure there's plenty of butter on everything. Except the top. I like to leave the top the way it is. And I don't like to rush the temperature on a grilled cheese. In fact, I got this a little too high. I like to keep it about medium or even lower. I mean, I can knock one out real quick if I'm in a hurry, but it's nice to take your time. Okay, now I'll flip over some of the the bread that's toasted. I'm going to put a little bit of cheese on that guy. Same way here. Flip over that bread that's toasted. I'll put a little more cheese. I'm going to toss the bacon in here for just a second. Can't hurt nothing. Okay. This guy's already pretty good. I'm Last little bit of cheese on it. And if you like a lot of cheese, put on a lot of cheese. I ain't no chef. I just, uh, my piece don't want to fit. Yeah, I think that was a wise decision. <laughs> you know, I had a friend got on me once for eating so much bacon. So the people that don't eat bacon live seven years longer on average. That's got to be long, seven miserable years. I'm going to take my bottom piece of bread. I'm going to put it down here. Cover it up on my top piece of bread for just a second. It'll kind of help melt that cheese down. In the meantime, a little bit of mayo. Pair that on my tomato slice. I like it on the tomato because it doesn't soggy up the bread. Let's see if our cheese came out okay. Yep, almost too long. That's all right. What there are in there. A bit of that. A bit of that. Let's toss on our last piece of top bread. Oh, baby. And there she is. Now, I suppose you're wondering what makes this. A Spanish sandwich. And I'll tell you what makes it a Spanish sandwich. Is the egg. See, something you may not know is that Americans, God bless us all, are one of the few in the world that say eggs are for breakfast. To the rest of the world, you can eat them anytime. And they tend to put those things on everything. 
especially fried. Now you can do this if you want. If you do, this would be a type of Spanish sandwich. You see it all the time. And in South America. If you can't if you can't force yourself to do it, then by all means enjoy this sandwich the way it is. And me I love an egg. that I can put on here and bust that baby and let that melt down in between my bacon. Enjoy your day.